Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And as you know, Sheboygan County has 22 departments. There's a lot going on, and one of the areas that's really taken flight of late is the work going on at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Today, we're very pleased to have Chuck Mayer with us, the manager of the airport. Chuck, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Good to have you here again. And please begin by sharing a little bit about yourself and when you started at the, the county airport. <clears throat> well, I am <clears throat> very uh, honored to uh, have had the privilege of managing the Sheboygan County Airport now for the past uh, 21 years. And it, it's really been quite an experience and uh, very uh, fulfilling as far as a, a department head, being able to be part of, uh, you know, a. a county-owned facility that has sh shown such uh, promise and such growth o over that time. I'm sure uh, some of our viewers may <clears throat> be perhaps surprised even here the county has an airport mm -hmm. and it's a critical piece to our economic development and the quality of life in Sheboygan County. How long has the county operated a county airport? Okay, <clears throat> the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport uh, basically got its start uh, as the result of a uh, County Board referendum in 1956. As far as you know, the debate whether the county or city should own, should own an airport, and the referendum passed uh, <clears throat> unanimously, pretty much in favor of the county uh, being responsible for an airport and building an airport. Um, 1960 is uh, basically when the airport construction was completed and the airport was officially dedicated in July of 1962. Darn. And for the past 21 years you've been at the helm. <laughs> yes. I'm very pleased to report and you know we've done some I think very you know good things out there at the airport. Prior to my 21 years managing the airport the, <clears throat> the previous airport manager uh, uh, was uh, Harry Chaplin. Uh, Chaplin Aviation served as a airports fixed base operator and also uh, served as a part-time airport manager. So please set the stage for our viewers a little bit. How large is our county airport and what are your mission and primary responsibilities? <clears throat> Since the airport was built back in 1958, 1960, uh, basically we've probably doubled the uh, acreage of county-owned property out there. Now we are just a little over I think 1,040 acres uh, that totally encompass uh, the airport property with navigation easements and everything like that. Um, <clears throat> the um, mission of the uh, county airport department basically is, uh, you know, we're, we're charged with the responsibility of maintaining a safe uh, um, transportation um, facility uh, for air carriers, uh, you know, and folks to, to use the uh, uh, airport, uh, you know, to safely get to and from, you know, their destinations and whatnot. In addition to, uh, you know, providing uh, operations, operational budget, I should say, uh, long range planning, uh, infrastructure improvements, and basically just trying to stay ahead of the power curve and offer a facility that, uh, you know, that, that uh, will accept, uh, you know, development uh, coming at it in the future. Now, how many staff, I know, a lot of responsibility <coughs> over, over uh what did you say? A thousand and one thousand and forty acres and counting. One thousand and forty acres yeah. and counting. There's been a lot of growth and development that right. we'll get into shortly. But how many staff do you have to help you manage all of that? <clears throat> that facility operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I have uh, the airport department. Basically, is made up of three full-time employees. Myself as a full-time airport manager, and I have two very, very capable airport maintenance technicians uh, that, you know, all three of us are on call basically, you know, 24-7, especially in the winter, uh, you know, to keep the runways plowed and things like that. Uh, the airport maintenance techs are very talented and everything from working on um, uh, diesel equipment, uh, plow trucks, things like that, to uh, uh, airside um, visual aids, navigational aids that are on the field. It's, I've got a, a real good department. So our viewers may be thinking, three, four people handling mm -hmm. this airport and, and 
you know, of course, the very important job of maintaining the, the runway and the snow removal in the winter, 24-7, as you said. Mm -hmm. But of course, it doesn't all fall in the lap of your staff and yourself. You have a fixed base operator out there. In <coughs> fact, uh, now there's two of them, are there not? <coughs> That's right. Um, as of uh, July of last year, basically the airport uh, existed, you know, for 40 some years with one fixed base operator. And it was Chaplin Aviation, which uh, sold business to Magnus Aviation, and now it's currently Western Shore Aviation. Um, July of last year, second f fixed base operator came onto the field, and that's Burroughs Aviation. And we're very excited to, to have another commercial operator on the field. Uh, with that fixed base operation also came a restaurant, which is known as the Final Approach. Uh, just a, a you know wonderful uh, atmosphere in, inside that uh, that restaurant for you know folks who haven't been out there yet. It'd, it'd be just you know worth your while to come out, you know, have lunch, uh, sit and watch the airplanes uh, take off and land. And the operator, in addition <coughs> to the the newest addition that uh, added the restaurant, which is just a beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. What's the primary role of these fixed-based operators? The fixed-based operator really provides a full service uh, <clears throat> to the uh, uh, people um, that own an airplane, uh, you know, that or are chartering an airplane. Uh, once they fly into the airport, uh, if they need ground transportation, the uh, fixed-based operator can arrange that. Um, the fixed-based operator also takes care of um, uh, airport, um, I should say, aircraft maintenance. They provide flight instruction. They provide uh, air charter operations, just a full scope of services. Very good, very good. And how do you compare, how does Sheboygan County compare to other <coughs> airports uh, similar to us across the state? How, how do we rank, how busy mm -hmm. are we? <coughs> well, I'm really, really proud of this, Adam, is that uh, over the years, uh, the, our numbers have, have really grown as far as activity at, at this airport. Um, uh, flight operations per year, the number of based aircraft uh, that operate out of this facility rank us uh, somewhere in, in the top 10 airports in the United States. And seeing that you know we have about 103 public airports in the state of Wisconsin and Sheboygan County Airport is up within that top 10, that's something that we can really be proud of. Very good. Very good. And finally, before I turn it over to Chairman Vandersteen, um, you have a number of very important tenants, and that's grown as well <clears throat> at the airport. Please give our viewers a flavor mm -hmm. for well, what types of tenants do you have out at the airport and who's mm -hmm. predominantly utilizing the airport? Right. Well, just backing up a little bit of history there, um, when the airport was built, it was just built under the category of general aviation. Since that time, we've kind of raised the bar, so to speak, uh, just by the, uh, the use of the airport and the type of industrial tenants now that base at our facility. Uh, the FAA has changed the airport ranking to a transport slash corporate category, which again allows us for probably a, a little better leverage for state and federal funding and um, <clears throat> length of runways and just uh, airside infrastructure and that above and beyond, you know, it's the next level of, of uh, uh, airport facility short of uh, an air carrier. And um, <clears throat> our backbone basically is uh, made up of uh, industrial corporate flight departments. We've, I think right now we're at about 14 uh, of these uh, corporate flight departments that, that are based at Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Um, some of our local uh, industries uh, have chose to establish their own flight departments uh, rather than rely on commercial airlines. That way they can move their people when they want, where they want. You know, um, our industrial tenants, uh, just uh, to name a few, we've got uh, the Kohler Company, uh, R Richardson uh, Engineering um, Industries, excuse me, Windway Capital Corp, uh, Aerometric Engineering, um, Orion Energies, um, let's see, Bemis uh, Manufacturing, uh, Great Lakes Aerial Survey, and uh, you know, um, some smaller businesses that have 
located at Sheboygan. Their operations auto. So, in addition to all those um, <clears throat> fundamental tenant number of um, private sector or individual leases. Do you <clears throat> Yeah, that's correct. We've um, we've got about uh, again, as I mentioned before, the the 14 uh, big capital uh, corporate flight departments based there, 38 uh, individual uh, privately owned hangars. A lot of these are just uh, you know the sport aviation people. Some are small businesses that are just you know getting into a, a single airplane flight department, growing. We're hoping in years that uh, you know we'll see them you know. Uh, you know, with a, with a major type of flight department, um, three commercial operators at the airport. Uh, you know, two fixed base operators, and then also another commercial operator that provides uh, for uh, T hangar rentals uh, for the aircraft that are based at Sheboygan. Excellent. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. Chuck, in addition to your maintenance <coughs> responsibilities, your department's also taken an active role in the capital planning process. Can you tell us a little bit about? The process that you're actively involved in right now for okay. capital projects? Capital projects really take up an awful lot of my time. Uh, and I think that's the key to the success of our airport is being ahead of the power curve um, so that we always have ample uh, infrastructure in place that will allow people when they, when they come to Sheboygan and, and ask to build at the airport, whether it is commercial development and industrial development or a private hangar, that we do have lots available for them, you know, to uh, to build when when they care to build. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, capital planning, basically, uh, at, at least during my term at the airport, kind of goes back to about uh, 1995 when we finished the the second uh, uh, update on the airport master plan. And from that update, which was accompanied by environmental assessment studies, feasibility studies, and you know, just a, just a whole gamut of uh, different studies that were necessary according to the FAA. Uh, from there, you know, we just very meticulously followed through on you know that that uh, master plan recommendation as as far as infrastructure um, development. And right now. Um, Current project and is probably one of the biggest in the history of, of the Sheboygan County Airport is the extension of the uh, primary runway. It's runway 321. Uh, it's a concrete runway that uh, started out at 5,000 feet in length, then was increased to 5,400. Now we are taking that runway to 6,800 feet overall length. Um, the final phase of that project is starting this summer with the uh, paving and everything being completed next year. And that is going to be about a nine, at least $9 million capital improvement project. It's a big one. Uh, could you tell us who provides <clears throat> input and guidance to, to your department? I answer to, or the airport department answers to, the um, uh, county board's <clears throat> uh, transportation committee. and. Um, in addition to that committee, we also have a uh, airport advisory committee. Uh, so between the two, we have a, a, a very good balance uh, uh, as, as far as sounding board and, and direction on what you know uh, should happen at the airport policies, um, procedures, things like that. Now, Chuck, I know you're gearing up for this uh, this extension of the runway, but what current projects are you working on right now that are you're implementing this year? For, uh, in addition to the, uh, the runway extension project, uh, we have a number of planning, plan and spec uh, uh, items uh, that are in the works now with an airport consulting engineer, and that's for development of the north central quadrant of the airport uh, to provide more corporate and industrial hangar lots. Um, in addition to the uh, potential of having Morgan Aircraft uh, manufacturing facility build um, on up in that, that north central quadrant um, and we're looking at uh, possible groundbreaking for, with Morgan uh, either late this year or early next year. That sounds like you're keeping busy. As you look past the next two years, what kind of other things are on the horizon uh, for the airport? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> once I can get through these 
infrastructure um, e expansion projects, then I go back and uh, <clears throat> we need to focus on uh, rebuilding a lot of the infrastructure at the airport, namely uh, the uh, apron areas, the main public aprons uh, out on the flight line. I've got taxiways that are pretty well past their service life um, expectancy. Uh, our secondary runway, which is runway 1331, it's an asphalt runway, uh, that needs to be strengthened again because of the, the, the heavier type aircraft now that are uh, using the Sheboygan County Airport. So that, that's the uh, primary focus, of, you know, once, once we're through the expansions. Now, Chuck, you talked about a $9 million uh, <clears throat> runway extension. That's a big number for a lot of us to, to think mm -hmm. about. Uh, who actually pays for this projects and how do you get these funded? Okay. For the past <clears throat> 21 years, uh, uh, the airport department has <laughs> always had um, either one, two, or three projects in, in the county five-year capital plan. And um, I think the reason we've been so successful in you know having the, the capital projects in that plan over the years is the fact that the funding that uh, we, we can uh, secure from the federal government, uh, the FAA particularly. Um, <clears throat> we're competing for funding uh, from a, a, federal, a federal aviation trust fund. And that fund is established uh, and grows from the uh, taxation, uh, which comes from airline tickets, uh, fuel sales, everything aviation related. That money is taxation is pretty well captured, put in, into the aviation trust fund. And then <clears throat> there are 4,000 airports across the United States that compete for that money. And um, I'm very proud to report that uh, Sheboygan County has been very successful over the past 21 years in getting its fair share of uh, the federal funds uh, for airport improvements. Um, the, the funding formula uh, that we're presently working under uh, as far as uh, the cost sharing on, as an example, a runway 321 uh, extension, that $9 million plus, is that 95% um, <clears throat> of the funds are paid from the Federal Aviation Trust, uh, the, the cost, I should say. 2.5% of the cost is paid by the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics and the remaining two and a half percent would come from Sheboygan County taxpayers. So Boy, two and a half percent of a nine million dollar project is, uh, you know, we, we can't put together a, a better, you know, package than that. That's a, a great leveraging of our money, Chuck. Thanks okay. for all the work you do to accomplish that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to focus on a little bit before I turn it back over to Adam is what economic benefits does this really mean for Sheboygan County having an airport like this in our, our county? Well, in, in order to, uh, you know, garner those type of funds, you know, from the federal government, they pretty well hold us, uh, you know, to the fire pretty much, so to speak, as far as uh, providing justification, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that, you know, the airport is a, 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 an economic vi viable uh, source, uh, you know, within the community. And uh, starting back in, I think it was 1993, and then again, <coughs> excuse me, in 95, um, 2000, 2003, and now in 2008 again, um, we've commissioned uh, a, an economic impact studies that show us what the return of having an airport is, you know, for our community. Uh, $20 million plus, I, I believe, was a, a typical number that's shown uh, as far as uh, revenues generated at the airport that, you know, roll back into Sheboygan County. That's fantastic. <clears throat> Adam? 9-11, of course, changed um, the world in a lot of ways, particularly um, the United States and our security yeah. concern at airports. And you have, of course, been in a lead role with making sure that the Sheboygan County Airport has security in place. Uh, what steps have been taken over the last, you know, five, <clears throat> ten years to improve the security? And what in particular has resulted since 9-11? Well, um, I think it was back in about 1992, uh, the airport finally uh, was able to put together funding necessary to build a fence around the facility. <clears throat> that fence started out, I think, about five miles overall length. With that, you know, we installed um, gates that were basically just kind of 
automatic. You, you, you drive your car up to it and the gate would open automatically and you, you know, you, you drive onto the air side and then you could get out the same way. 9-11 um, happened and uh, things changed drastically at, at, at the airport. Um, with the help of uh, the, um, some uh, transportation uh, um, funding and whatnot, we were able to uh, put in, uh, transition these gates to uh, more secured ask, ac access by using uh, uh, key fobs. <clears throat> so all of our airport tenants or any vendors um, need to have a key fob in order to access gates you know, that will allow them in and out of, out of the airport. Along with that, um, we were able to get some federal funding to install security cameras at strategic locations of the airport so we can monitor you know, um, who comes and goes, not only on the air side of the fence, but also on the uh, uh, land side of, of the security fence. Now, I've been here since 99, and I can recall us improving the fence. And I don't know if we heightened it or put barbed wire around the top, but that happened after I arrived. And I've, I've recognized that with all the improvements we've made that certainly are warranted, and I think give folks a better sense of comfort when they're using the airport. But as you travel throughout the state, you'll notice from time to time that you know the airport's I don't know if it's the Wapaka Airport I'm always going by on the way to mm -hmm. Stevens Point when I visit my family or what, but some of the airports don't have any fencing or they just have a very short <coughs> little fence on one portion of the airport. What triggers, um, you know, the further mm -hmm. security such as we have or was it just being, just being more proactive here than some communities have been? It's both, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> definitely being proactive, uh, again, to uh, ensure the security for you know these industrial tenants that we have based at at the airport, uh, Homeland Security grants again uh, was uh, something that that was out there and it, it was really a shame to pass up you know some of these cost sharing, uh, the uh, uh, transition of the gates to the key fob access, the security camera system, that was 100 percent paid by Homeland Security grant. You know, when I saw the opportunity there, it was like it was kind of a no-brainer. You know, it's something that we needed to do to just improve the infrastructure that we already, you know, were putting in place. Uh, <clears throat> the barbed wire improvement made on the fence again was Homeland Security grant, uh, and that was done after 9/11. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a real credit, as Chairman Vanderston said to you and and your department, but you in particular going after these grants because though the money may be there, if you don't take the time and the initiative to go after them, mm -hmm. you're not gonna see them come back home. So uh, my right. compliments. Thank you. What, o what other things <coughs> have happened from a standpoint of security? Uh, for example, when we have our a PGA or some major golf event, I know from time mm -hmm. to time you'll have um, an airport tower, a portable tower brought in. What, what other things occasionally happen out there? Right. The, um, <clears throat> the big events at the airport uh, starting back in 2004 with the PGA and then we had another golfing event uh, the other year uh, gearing up for another huge one in, in 2010. Mm -hmm. the PGA is coming back once again. Um, <clears throat> again, going back looking for, for grants and, and funds to uh, you know, support the added expenses that, that occur at the airport. Uh, because of the, the world-class, uh, you know, golf courses that we have in Sheboygan County now, basically Sheboygan County Airport is the uh, airport of destination uh, <clears throat> for folks wanting to use those facilities. That really adds uh, quite the workload, uh, you know, to the airport uh, as far as uh, aircraft uh, movement uh, in and out. And um, we had requested uh, funding assistance from the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics and the FAA as far as a temporary air traffic control tower. So that uh, <clears throat> was here uh, twice already and we're already programming to get that back in 2010, you know, to help us uh, make that airport as safe an environment as possible and, and to very effectively move you know, these corporate jets uh, in and out uh, of the airport as, as safely as, as can be. Very good, very good. Um, <clears throat> you have another major event out there that I wanted to take the last couple of minutes to talk about, and that's the Wings and Wheels event that you and many other affiliations help 
uh, provide on Father's Day out there and having personally enjoyed it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's something special. You get a wonderful turnout. <clears throat> What's going on this year with Wings and Wheels? Well, again, I'm very happy to report that this will be the 18th annual, <laughs> <laughs> haven't missed a year, Wings and Wheels on Father's Day, June 15th, Sunday. Um, <clears throat> basically the same players as far as sponsors, EAA Chapter 766, we've got the Plymouth Snow Rangers, a lot of uh, Sheboygan uh, civic groups, uh, the Kiwanis and whatnot will, will be there to provide food and beverage. Besides that, Adam, I'd, I'd also uh, just like to mention that we, we do have a, a few other things happening at the airport. Um, July uh, 14th, 15th, and 16th, the uh, Collins Foundation out of the, the southern part of the United States um, has initiated what's called a uh, um, Wings of Freedom tour. And <clears throat> they will be bringing up uh, some uh, World War II aircraft, uh, B-17, B-24, B-25, and a P-51 Mustang that will be statically displayed on the ramp over at the Burroughs Aviation Facility. Um, so the, the aircraft will be there. It's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you know some folks to come out and see that. Uh, usually you only see these type of aircraft at the uh, uh, National Convention of the EAA at, at Oshkosh where here you can come to Sheboygan and you know uh, hopefully you know we'll we'll have some crowds out there but nothing like what you experience at Oshkosh uh, you know to see these uh, World War II aircraft um, rides will be available for those wanting to you know pay for a ride on, on one of those machines so that, <clears throat> that's coming up, and then also on July 23rd through the 28th, uh, another group of um, uh, World War II, or I should say this, th these aircraft would be just after World War II, that's uh, the uh, military trainers, a T-28 group. We'll have about 30 of those aircraft at Sheboygan County Airport for a whole week, and they chose uh, Sheboygan County Airport uh, this year uh, to hold their uh, safety and training clinic. So during that period of time, uh, you'll see these formations of T-28s <laughs> flying all over Sheboygan County. And uh, <clears throat> basically when they're done with their one, one week training seminar and whatnot uh, at Sheboygan Airport, uh, the entire squadron, so to speak, will then uh, relocate to uh, Oshkosh for the, uh, the week-long uh, EAA convention. And uh, you've probably seen that televised where, uh, you know, there's massive for formation of aircraft. It's usually the T-28s. So we'll have them at Sheboygan. Outstanding. Yeah. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us today. An excellent overview. We filled our time quickly. And if you have any questions or you want to see something pretty cool, get out to your Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. If you haven't been out there of late, I think you'll be really surprised to see the growth and infrastructure improvements that have happened over the years. A nice restaurant out there, and Chuck certainly is always willing to take questions or give folks a sense of what's happening. So thank you, Chuck, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for the great work you and your team do out there. Thank you. Until next time, on behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, Chairman Vandersteen and myself, thank you for joining us.